That thing is standing straight up. Very happy. I'm so glad you came into my life. Da 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 da. Coming in hot, boys. This is an extremely rare and classic 1974 Suzuki TC100, the last year of the TCs. What is special about this bike is unlike the TS models, this has a dual range transmission. So you can go on uh, urban roads and maybe even on the highway if you want to push your luck, but there's a little lever on the side right here. You just flip it to the left and then it goes in the low range. In low range, watch this. This thing go It'll, it'll rip your house off the foundation. Watch us. <laughs> he says he's going to hook it up to the house right there and pull it up the hill. It's actually snowing out here today. Little snowflakes. It's, it's like 32 degrees out. It's actually snowing out here today. But I'm warm inside, right? This classic Suzuki TC100. Let's bring it inside and I'll go over all the work order and uh, restoration information. What's happening guys, I'm obviously having a lot of fun here today. This is a very, very special bike. When I was in 1974, I had the TM, the motocross version of this, the 100cc Suzuki race bike, and uh, this is a total flashback to my youth. The cool thing about this bike is, this came from a big batch of bikes that we picked up at All Sport Cycle. Jeff was, uh, has his shop up for sale. We went and bought his whole inventory of bikes. This is Jeff's personal on and off road trail bike. He did a full frame off restoration on it, but what's special about this bike is it's 46 years old and Junior, who's holding the camera right now, 20 years old, was infatuated with this when it came off the trail. Of all the bikes, he said, wow, Pops, look at the color of this thing. It's awesome, the chrome, the color, the, the, this is a freedom machine. This is a bike when you were 16 years old in 1974. If you had this, you were getting all the fun. You were having all the fun. It's got passenger pegs, take your girl to the beach, What's so cool about the TC100 besides it stood the test of time and still looks badass 50 years later? 
dual range transmission. They made a TS. It's sibling. The, the TS was a decontented version of this. This has a dual speed transmission that will go from crawling along the ground, first gear, rip your house off the foundation power, to cruising down Route 44 at 55 miles an hour. Just a little switch of the lever right here from off road to road capability. Very versatile. This is a rotary valve, unlike the, the larger brother, the TS's, which had a, uh, a case, a, excuse me, a uh, port induction where the uh, it went in right to the cylinder. This is a case read in induction, rotary, rotary valve. It's a rotary valve, right? It's a rotary valve. Rotary valve induction on the right side, so you don't even see the carburetor. The carburetor goes right into the side of the motor, and it made it a little bit tor more torquey, a little more power. Some other cool features it has the handlebar mounted choke release. Starts first kick every time, runs like a new bike. A uh, little bit more than history. The TS series is a family of two stroke dual sport motorcycles. They started making them in 69. The series was most, uh, was the first Suzuki trail bike sold on the mass market. Most of the TS line had an air cool engine, and most models were just used alongside the closely related TM100. Uh, the 100. I had one when I was a kid. The TC, this one here, was a trail model. The TF farm and the DS, which stood for Dirt Sport, which had no turn signals and simplified lighting. Um, they all saved it. In most cases, it was the same engine and transmission with different running gear. So the um, the uh, the smaller TS Series 90 and 100 had rotary valve induction, like I just said, and, until the introduction of the ER Series, which was a major redesign was shipped to a combined reed valve and piston port type motor. So um, the TS 100, Blazer was from 73 to 81. This is a TC 100 Blazer, which was the last year they made it in 1974. So there's a little history of it. Um, this bike has been owned by Jeff Castine, the man at mechanic we talked about, but all sport cycle, probably one of the best mechanics on the East Coast. This was his personal bike. He did what we call a preservation service, or it wasn't a full restoration. It has original paint on the tank, which I prefer. It has original patina and paint on the side cover. All the chrome's original. So cosmetically, it's not perfect, but it looks pretty damn good for a 50 year old bike. Mechanically is where it really shines. He took this thing right down to the frame. I talked to him this morning, got a full rundown. He painted, he uh, took the engine out of the frame, uh, sandblasted and painted the entire frame. The rear wheel was dismantled. It has new rear wheel bearings in it. It's got uh, new brake shoes in it. He um, trued, trued and adjusted the spokes, put a brand new chain and sprocket, and there's a rubber cush drive inside of there that he put a new rubber cush drive along with new um, wheel bearings, cush drive, and also even the bolts. He put new bolts to hold the sprocket on, and he knew the fold over tabs, new sprocket, and a new chain. Everything's new back there. Uh, the front end of the bike, same thing. Uh, brand new wheel bearings, brand new brakes. Oh, I forgot to mention, brand new rear tire, brand new front tire. The front tire is a Michelin, the rear is a Kenda period correct knobby tires that work okay on the street, but they work really good off-road. So the running gear has all been completely gone through, brakes, has the original Suzuki grips on here. Um, so, hey, before I get too far into this, there was a song that I, that I from Blood, Sweat, and Tears from the 70s that um, popped into my head when I was riding this bike, and here it is. Me so very happy, I'm so glad you came into my life. Here it is. I was singing this riding around, you know, that's what it's all about. These things are supposed to be fun. This is as fun as it gets. That's why it appealed to a millennial 20 year old, my son. That's why Junior got to sing was the cat's ass and why he's been riding around. And everybody in the shop thinks it's the coolest thing. The big chrome fenders, the chrome headlight, the chrome forks and chrome ears, the chrome exhaust cover chrome rims, and the, the turquoise ocean green blue paint job is off the hook. Even the gas cap's cool. It's like an old aluminum gas cap. Yeah, the 70s enduro bikes are undeniable, 100%. What caught your eye on this thing when, when, you, uh, when you saw it? Simple, guys. The metal chrome fenders of this era, the upswept exhaust on some of the, the uh, Suzuki models. Suzuki's only competition was Yamaha um, in this category. The, the Yamaha Enduro series. And uh, Suzuki, in my opinion, mechanically is was far superior than the Yamaha. I think they're similar power-wise when you look at, uh, I believe it was, it was the LT100 by Yamaha versus uh, this bike. Um, 
Yamaha didn't have a rotary. Well, yeah, they did. But the brakes, the, the drum brakes on the Suzuki models are superior. If you've ridden these bikes back to back, you would know that. Um, typical Japanese engineering, um, exactly what you'd expect. That's why they've become wildly popular, because you can take something like this and ride it on a weekly basis, and it's an investment quality bike. They're getting harder to find. So metal fenders and, and metal bodywork that rotted out if it wasn't cared for. So. Just looking at the, 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 you're right, looking at the quality of the fixture back here for the taillight, oh, it's got the three drilled holes in it, the reflectors on the side, beautiful chrome, and it's stamped on the back, Suzuki 35710-8, made in Japan. Just a quality piece. So um, the engine, Jeff had the engine out of the bike and took the cylinder, head off, took the cylinder off, and might the cylinder and the piston. The cylinder had, the piston had been, he didn't know this, but it was previously replaced by this, the, the, the previous owner. He, and he had a brand new piston for it, but it didn't need it. It, it was perfectly within tolerance. So he cleaned the piston, decarbonized de, um, the combustion chamber, polished the head, uh, put a new head gasket, new base gasket on it, cleaned the ports out, decarbonized the ports, uh, cleaned the piston and put a new set of rings on it and reassembled it. Uh, the clutch is in perfect working order. That was replaced by the previous owner. The clutch doesn't slip, and it has a perfect 150 pounds per square inch of compression and a brand new spark plug. He also decarbonized the exhaust, took the exhaust off, sandblasted that, and painted it. You can see all the hardware holding it, the, uh, uh, cylinder, the cylinder and exhaust on is in perfect order. He also ordered from the UK brand new production Suzuki, new old stock air filter. Good luck finding one of these. These are gonna, if you're gonna find one of these today, you're gonna spend about 150 bucks, if you can even find one, for the complete air box and air filter uh, assembly, and that's brand new. So it's breathing nice fresh air, the carburetor's completely rebuilt, um, engine's been gone through totally, then he cleaned the cases and reassembled it back in the original frame and uh, fired it up and tuned it. So he went right through the whole, the whole top end. A Couple pieces are still on order right now. We ordered an OEM Suzuki headlight, the headlight um, bulb is dead, so we have a brand new OEM Suzuki, not an aftermarket headlight, coming and a regulator rectifier. A regulator and a rectifier are on order. Those will be installed because right now the headlight doesn't work and that's what's wrong with it. We're replacing it though. So the brake light works, the horn works, um, but we're putting the headlight in, uh, and uh, uh, wiring the turn signals. These are brand new turn signals that Jeff installed on the bike also. The gas tank has been repaired by the previous owner. That's something I want to note here. It's kind of a cobby repair. They, they uh, uh, soldered the bottom of the tank here. It's a little bit cobby. It's a little lumpy looking. Um, I want to disclose that. The, the tank has no dents on the side. Um, on the top, it's got one little ding right here. Original paint looks beautiful. Jeff has another tank for 100 bucks. If you want to buy another gas tank that, that doesn't have a repair spot on it and have professionally painted for about another 300 bucks in the graphics, you could have it looking like a brand new motorcycle. I like the original tank, it works fine. Um, and the Peacock's been rebuilt. It has a brand new set of uh, fuel lines and um, fuel filter, see-through glass filter on it. To so ride it, leave it alone. Ride it and leave it alone. Just leave it alone. Leave it alone, don't mess leave with it. it. That's it's the original paint. paint. Original. Just that's, leave it alone. That's for damn sure. I just wanted to disclose the tank has been repaired. And there are, isn't the tank available if you wanted to leave the original paint on this and put a brand new paint job on it and bring it to shows, whatever you want to do. So. Um, we're running VP non-ethanol fuel in here. So we're running all of our bikes here. So um, just to go through the list again, it's got a brand new battery in it, uh, brand new turn signals front and rear. Jeff put 37 hours of labor, including changing the tires on it, stripped the bike to the frame, repainted the frame, dismantled the engine, uh, new head and base gaskets, new spark plug, new air filter, new air cleaner, rebuilt the carb, the tank was fixed, uh, Peacock was rebuilt, new fuel lines, new fuel filter, new synthetic Bellray S17 oil, Brand new chains and sprockets and sprocket bolts and tabs. Uh, new wheel bearings front and rear. New brake pads, new drive cushions, paint of the exhaust. Okay, 37 hours labor there. And then it came to our shop where we put another nine hours in it. We washed it, all the aluminum was polished. We touched up the frame and swing arm, polished the wheels, painted the kickstand, and painted the chain guide. And um, did a compression test, diagnosed the headlight and rectifier issue, um, and put the, drain the fuel and put, uh, the new race fuel in it, or ethanol free fuel. So um, the total cost, uh, we've got nine hours of labor in it um, with the headlight and everything else. The total parts cost was, where is it? Um, 
$1,378, and the labor, there's a total between Jeff's 37 hours and our nine hours, uh, 46 hours of labor at $90 an hour. I'm giving you these figures, not because we're not asking anybody to pay this price. What I'm telling you is if you bought this bike to us at 90 bucks an hour or any other reputable shop said, geez, completely dismantle my 50 year old motorcycle right down to the engine, dismantle the engine, rebuild the engine, paint the frame, put all the wheel bearings, brakes, everything in it. Guess what? You're gonna have, you're gonna have a 46 hour work order because it takes a week to completely dismantle a motorcycle. And if you're lucky, think about this, just finding the page long list of parts, ordering them from the UK, especially in this COVID-19 era, when we can't even get jack shit shipped from our distributors in the US, good luck finding all the parts to do this, good luck. So if you think you're gonna, think you're gonna buy one for $400, that doesn't run, that's a crusty barn find, and restore it in, well, plan on taking months of time. And this is supposed to be fun. If you like doing that, go ahead, do one yourself. If you don't, if you want one that's turnkey, and you can get on, put your babe on the back, and take her to the beach, buy this bike. If you want something that you can bring up to your camp and ride on the trails, buy this bike. It's a classic that the youngsters are gonna like, like Junior, old folks like me are gonna like it. And look at the, look at the quality, or the fit and finish on this bike in the color of the, of the paint combo, the dark green, the light green on the 100 with, the, with the, the white pinstriping, the light blue, the gray, just a stunning, like Kenny said, the 70s trail bikes are classic. So 46 hours labor is $4,140, $1,378 worth of parts plus tax. You've got a bottom line work order of $5,188, which sounds completely insane, but that's what it is. Call any motor... Call your local Suzuki dealer, tell them you got a 74, and give them this work order, and ask them to give you a quote. That's what it's gonna cost. Um, we are, I, I disclose these things, these things, not because I'm asking you to pay that, I'm just showing you what the time and material cost is, unless you're gonna do it as a labor of love, and you've got an extra 47 hours that your wife and kids and your boss can spare you not, not being around. On top of that 47 hours, that doesn't count all the time it took to find all the parts. You know, our, our, our parts manager's time isn't figured into that, or nor the time to even hunt down one that's worth the restoring. Original 7,400 mile bike, it's a kick-ass piece. It's got my seal of approval. I would uh, gladly like to see any of, my, any of our subscribers or uh, friends or family buy this bike. It's a kick-ass little piece. If you want to take it over the finish line and make it a museum piece, you can do that. You can, you can or you can leave it the hell alone, which is what I recommend you do, and just ride the wheels off of it and have a blast. So if you have any questions about the bike, give us a call, 860-454-7024. Another classic from the pros here at Kaplan Cycles and Jeff Castine. God bless America. <laughs>